Hello, it is Saturday, November 11th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Saturday crossword today, which means we've got a themeless, possibly quite tricky crossword. So i um, curious, as always, to see what, what is in store. But this edition of the Daily Solve, this themeless edition of the Daily Solve, has been brought to us by Aaron Spiller, Lake House Bros, William Arundel, and, as always, the indomitable showmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. Their generous support keeps this whole thing going. Thank you to them. Thanks to everybody who is a patron, of course. If you would like to support the channel in that same way, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field underneath the video. Um, there is, of course, a whole bevy of bonus content, including the most recent... Um, weekly pseudo uh, speed solve of the mini crosswords that went up yesterday as usual on Friday. And I did reasonably well, actually, I'm perfectly pleased with my times this week. And uh, of course, everything else is up there as well. I am also, there's, there also do another boss words fall themeless leak puzzle. So I need to get that up as quickly as possible. Um, anyway, thanks as always to all the patrons. And there's also the daily solve discord chat server, you can join that via the description field. And finally, please do consider subscribing to the channel, uh, liking the videos, and so on. All of those things are very helpful. All right, let's get on to the solve. Uh, there is some drilling going on, but I I haven't heard any in, in, in a while. So I thought, okay, well, I mean, in a while, I mean about 15 minutes. So I figured, let's try and get this solved and see if I can sneak in through a, um, a gap in the drilling next door. Okay, this is a Saturday themeless crossword by Blake Sloniker. So uh, I believe about half a dozen puzzles to his name. And this is a Saturday themeless. Let's start solving. Strangely, I, I almost just pressed the stop recording button rather than the play button on the actual browser. So that was a strange, <laughs> strange move. Didn't do it. Let's get on with it. Snack brand that originated in 1919. Um, this I don't know by, I don't know in terms of the fact, but if I had to guess, it would be Nabisco, the National Biscuit Company, which I just, I absolutely adore Nabisco as a, uh, as a contraction of National Biscuit Company. I think that's incredibly funny. And um, I don't know if that's actually the answer. I just, it would fit, but there are probably other things that would fit. So I don't want to um, go out on a limb with that one. Steamy scene, spa day or something? No steamy scene. I mean, you read this and you think, oh, well, it's a, it's, it's a romantic scene from a film or something, but I'm almost certain it's not because of the question mark that suggests a bit of punnery or misdirection. So I, I don't, I think it's probably something, something else. Big Brother's Super State in 1984. Oh, what is, oh no, there's East Asia, which is their, uh, sort of eternal, enemy or sometimes not depending on the state of the the propaganda what is what is big brother's super state um oceana i'm 90 percent sure this is right if so that would rule out uh nabisco unfortunately uh let's see wife who whom mark antony deserted for Cleopatra. Um, oh, I should know this as well. Oh, I'll need I'll need another cross. That's so annoying. I'm very sorry. Um, it might be done into space. It might be done into space. Sort of launch into space or staring into space. It might be done. Staring might be done into space. You're staring into space. You're not being Octavia. Ah, that is so that is that is so frustrating that I didn't get that immediately. But there we go. Okay, staring into space. I think that's probably right. What about this denim dye? Anil is a blue dye. I might be mispronouncing that because it's not a word I ever really say. But it's it's a blue dye. I didn't actually specifically know that it was what well, is used for denim, but I bet it is. Safety often. Something law? Some sort of safety law, maybe? I don't, I'm not sure about this. Keeper of keys and grounds at Hogwarts. I have no idea, sorry. 
Okay, fork-like. Tined. A fork has tines. Okay, so the steamy scene. It's not spot anything. What do I think this is? Boy, I'm really just, I'm off to a slow start with this crossword, aren't I? Safety, often appraisal, abbreviation, appraisal, appraisal a, um, brought forth, sired, as in begat a child. I mean, there are probably other, this is sort of like staring, where there are probably other things this could be, but this this feel it just feels right to me. But it, may, it, it honestly might not be. Service setting. Um, in the sense of a table setting, maybe? Or something else. There's so, service is one of those words that has so many meanings. NBA great named Sir Charles. Sir Charles, Charles Barkley. That at least is a name I know. Um, is a is a famous basketball player. So there we go. Steamy scene. Oh, a hot bath. Oh, right. Okay. I, I was on the right track with the spa thing. I just I completely didn't think of this possibility. But there we go. That's certainly what it is. Oh, Hostess is the stack brand that originated in 1990. So right, Hostess makes all sorts of um, kind of commercial baked goods. Safety often. A, how am I still not seeing what this is? Um, safety. Is it a, a sports position, maybe? Oh, maybe it is. A tackler? I don't know, but I, I mean, that could be... Boy, this is really highlighting my areas of ignorance. Service setting a tea cart. Oh, right. Okay, it's a tea service. That, that wasn't something that occurred to me. And then an appraisal is an evaluation. Okay, fair enough. This isn't an abbreviation. I see all that often, but it's perfectly reasonable. Ones with strong appetites. Oh, Charles Barkley with a Y it must be, because these would be the mythological creatures, the uh, satyrs. Um, the satyrs. Um, the sort of goat, goat men creatures. Greek myth. All right. Medical research of a sort. Okay. So now we finished off this, almost this square here in the corner. So there's an interesting construction, actually. We do have these very cleanly defined squares in the four quadrants and then a cross that, that sort of divides them. Um, anyway, let's see. Oh, well, okay. Keeper of Keys and Crowns of Hardwalk. So I have heard the name Hagrid. I do know that this is the name of a character from Harry Potter. I didn't know these uh, particular offices of this person, but there we go. And then targets for sensors are dirty. So this is, this is sensors in the, in the sense of um, people who excise objectionable language or, or whatever from, you know, artistic works or something like that. So it could be dirty words or dirty speech or dirty, um, not sure. But it, it looks like it does start this way, probably. Some commercial come-ons. Not sure. Can't stomach. If one can't stomach, stomach something, one detests it. It doesn't quite fit one. Mm, there are probably possible, other possibilities. Probably, I mean, more than one, probably. Some commercial come-ons. I don't know. Boy, this is, this is tough for me so far. Medical research of a sort. Oh, a drug trial, maybe, or drug trials? Just based on that DR, let's see. Filled in. Hmm. And Pooh's bestie. Oh, is Tigger Pooh's best friend? I didn't remember that it was specifically Tigger, but that makes sense. Uh, let's see. Roger Blank, physics Nobelist known for tilings. Oh, right. Okay, I'll recognize this when I see it, but... No, this isn't this isn't Tigger. This isn't actually Tigger because um, this is Roger Penrose. Penrose tiles are, um, you know, you sort of you can buy them as toys, but but there's there. I'm not knowledgeable enough about this to speak speak about it in any useful way. But there's some, you know, Roger Penrose 
demonstrated something very significant about how things are sort of sorted or organized using um, tiling anyway. So so Pooh's Bestie is not Tigger, but rather Piglet, which sounds actually much more correct to me. So there we go. Okay. How knights jousted typically in armor, I would I would think. New Testament folk are... This will be an ethnic group, presumably. Re you know, referenced in the Bible. I don't know. Is it someone who maybe Paul wrote letters to? I'm not sure. Okay, mountebanks. So a mountebank is a kind of cad or a ruffian, right? So who would this be? And burns at the stake. <laughs> so burns at the stake. So you read burns at the stake and you think, oh, you're being burned uh, for a crime, you're being, you're being immolated, but, uh, steak is spelled like beef. So I think this probably means chars or seers or something. And third eye users would be seers. So the third eye, the sort of gift of foresight, um, metaphorically, and then physical feature of the God pan, uh, cloven hooves or a goatee maybe. Let's see if that works. Flipped in a way. Oh, you resold a house, for instance. You flipped it. And then cartoon superhero with an A on his chest. Um, oh, Adam, Adam Ant. I don't even know that I've ever seen an episode of this, but I do recognize the name. So it must, must, be, must have an A. And then burns at the stakes. Oh, right. I was going to say that confirms which it is, but it doesn't. It could still equally be Sears or Chars. That's funny. Torments. Oh, okay. So here we go. Harry's. So if someone is harried, they're sort of tormented or maybe henpecked or something. So burns at the stake. This now does confirm it is chars. And then mountebanks are, um, oh, con artists. Right. Okay. So a kind of, um, deceiver or, you know, a fraud. All right. Tip at a hair salon. A split end. There we go. Which you'll you'll want trimmed trimmed away. Our, oh, New Testament folks are the Gentiles. There we go. Okay. There we go. Non non Jews. And then remove as from a stock exchange would be to delist a company from a uh, public. Well, I guess it doesn't need to be public, but from a stock exchange. Okay. Filled in. Updated? Yeah, yes. If you filled someone in, you updated them. That is correct. Some commercial come-ons are uh, rebates. So you could be offered a come-on in the sense of a, you know, they're attempting to attract you with the rebate. If you can't stomach something, right, we looked at this already. Can't stomach. I can't stomach it. I, I just can't think of any other synonyms. I'm sure there are plenty. That's so, so frustrating. Quit early, so to speak. If you quit early, so to speak, that so to speak is interesting. So it's not a strict synonym, presumably. Six on. you a dog, If you sick a dog on somebody, you set the dog at them. So sets at, I would think that probably is. Quit early, so to speak. Can't stomach D. Oh, I don't know why I can't see it. Word before star or after good. can't quite see that either. Bringer of sleep and dreams. I wonder if this is the name of a god or something maybe because we have um, a kind of a few references. We have satyrs, we have um, Pan referenced in here. Are there any others? Maybe not. I don't know. I guess we have Octavia, which is sort of the classical world kind of more broadly. I'm just wondering if that's Maybe, maybe not a theme, but just sort of a little kind of uh, sub theme of the puzzle. Site of Chicago's Centennial Wheel. Um, this is probably the wheel that was constructed for the World's Fair. I don't know the name of its site. I mean, I probably did at one point because I have read about it, but I certainly don't remember. Oh, quit early, bailed. You're bailing, you're quitting early. There we go. That's probably right. So. Doesn't help me, unfortunately. 
Maybe this isn't dirty, though. Why it looks strange, but I don't know. Okay, to leave someone high and dry is to strand them. There we go. That was simple enough. Narcolepsy medicine. Um, Ritalin, maybe? Is that is that used to treat narcolepsy? It seems like it might be, right? Because that that's kind of an upper, essentially. Let's see. Storm, storm warning. A siren? Yeah, that, would, that makes sense. Oh, DN. That's interesting. It's probably DNA. Occasion for cheek swabs. Yes, a DNA test. There we go. It's useful to notice things like that because sometimes they indicate that you've got something wrong, but sometimes they indicate a very specific word that has few possibilities. Uh, blank for now. Tata for now, you might say. Goodbye. Coffee first cultivated in Yemen. Oh, um, oh what, what is it? Uh, Arab... Arabis? What, what is the... Oh, I can't remember the name of this coffee. That's so frustrating. I know it. Um, there's Robusto, and then there's... Is it just Arabian? I don't think it actually is. Okay, well, what about this server unit? A megabit? A web browser question mark. Oh, netizen. So someone, right. So web browser, obviously we interpret that to mean the software, but also as indicated by the question mark pun indicator, it could mean the actual person who is browsing the web or a, a citizen of the web, you could say a netizen. Um, a funny, a funny sort of portmanteau that I think probably had much higher cultural currency in the late nineties than it does now, because we sort of all are that uh, put on a pedestal. To idolize somebody is to put them on a pedestal, metaphorically. Um, bulletin board material. Um, I'm not sure, actually, offhand. Like the S in debris, but not Du Bois. <laughs> right. Okay, so uh, silent or... Not Du Bois. Like the S in debris, but not... Because the thing is, diff there are people who pronounce that name... Dubois in the French manner, but there are also people who pronounce it Du Bois. Um, so I actually don't know which I think this is referring to. But even if I did, it's not obvious to me what the answer is. Fantasy sports format informally. No idea. Don't know anything about fantasy sports nor regular sports. Uh, mulligans uh, are redos. There you go. You sort of take your turn again. Um, I think maybe most often associated with golf. Uh, bulletin board material. <clears throat> I assume what this is referring to is material, not in the sense of a physical material like cork, but rather um, what might be put on it. But I, but I can't think exactly what it is offhand. Eyepiece. Uh, side of Chicago's Centennial Wheel. Young, oh, Young Frankenstein player, 1974. Oh, um, is it Gene Wilder? Does he play Frankenstein, who I think in that film pronounces his, his name Dr. Frankenstein? I can't read, I can't, I've seen that film once, I think, a long time ago, but I think that might be the case. Oh, so targets for censors, if so, were simply dirty words. That's, that's simple. Um, I guess I, I guess it's not so much that that was possible, but that there were other possibilities it could have been. So if one can't stomach something, one, I can't, it's so strange that I can't think of any synonyms that would fit there. It'll seem so obvious in retrospect. Pot. Ganja, maybe, if it's a slang term for marijuana here. Let's try it and see if we can justify that. The love, oh, the love blank of W.E.B. Du Bois. Uh, and, I, and I'm about 85% certain that W.E.B. Du Bois did pronounce his name in that manner. And um, people have corrected me on that before, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. That, that is actually right. Um I mean, people have corrected me to say it should be Dubois, but I don't actually think it was. Uh, in, 
any case, it's not helping me solve this clue, is it? What about this one? Pedestals. I mean, this maybe this is wrong. Rudolph's signature feature. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, famously, of course, as the name suggests, had a red nose. So this is this. That was wrong. So a oh, grass. Then how about that? So the love songs of W. B. Du Bois. There we go. Pedestals stands on which a you know statue is situated. Perhaps put on a pedestal, adored. No. Um, that's nice though, having pedestal uh, referenced in those. Parallel clues, those abutting clues, and then must, if you must do something, you need to do it. I was thinking the other day about need and have, and how those words are both synonymous and yet also uh, antonyms as well, because if you say, I need to do something, and I have to do something, uh, they're synonymous. They mean essentially exactly the same thing. But of course, if you say, I need some money versus I have some money, they're almost the opposite. Um, I don't know why I was thinking about that. I think I was thinking about it because I was studying some German and uh, I was just thinking about the way that strange words like that are so arbitrary and make perfect sense to native speakers, but are completely impenetrable. Um, and, you know, until you get accustomed to them as a, as someone who isn't already familiar with the language. Anyway, put on a, and this just reminded me of that when I was thinking of need to, must, uh, put on a pedestal. Um, I don't know. Bringer of sleep and dreams. Oh, the Sandman famously brings sleep and dreams. There we go. So, Navy something, side of Chicago's Centennial Wheel. Word before star. Oh, the evening star, or good evening, you could say. There we go. There we go. Put on a pedestal. If you admired someone, you put them on a pedestal. There we go. And then... How do I still... Oh, despises despises of course that is can't stomach you can't stomach something you despise it i don't know why that was so elusive to me for so long so the site of Ch chicago's centennial wheel must be the navy pier okay i don't i don't actually know that i did know that but but there we go okay so eyepiece is i don't even know this either okay bulletin board material notices notices of course notices are placed on a bulletin board and then eyepiece remind, remint, remina, is that, is remina something? Like the S in debris, but not Du Bois. Assonant? I, uh, fantasy sports format informally. Go to... Is there a sort of a go-to for, I, I just, oh, a sonant, as in, doesn't make a sound? That must be what this, Arabica, Arabica beans, Arabica coffee. Ah, okay, that's what it was. I knew it was related to, you know, Arabia, but I just couldn't think of the actual specific word. Okay, so this must be a sonant, in other words, not sonant, not sound, not sounded. So there we go. No, okay, I have something wrong. Right. All right. Well, I'm going to do my typical, typical thing here where I just run through the grid and I, and I just try and find what I've done wrong. And, uh, let's see if it, if it jumps out at me. Barkley. I mean, do I think that looks right? Probably. I'm going to just, I'm going to keep going. If I have to go through this in greater detail, I will, um, I'll edit it out. Six on sets at yeah. The thing that's annoying about this to you probably is that I'm probably skipping over the thing that I actually did wrong and you're noticing and that's very annoying. Okay, I'm going to go through the downs, but I'm going to pause the video because this is not interesting for you to watch. So I'll be, I'll be there in a moment. Okay, well, this didn't jump out at me in the acrosses, but it did in the downs. I remembered that eyepiece Ramina doesn't mean anything to me. Um, and I just assumed it was a word I didn't know, but it's probably not. It's probably just wrong because a retina could also be an eyepiece and a tegabit isn't anything, but a terabit is, and then a fantasy sports format. So this was, this was tough because I don't know anything about fantasy sports. So I just assumed again, go to sure. That could be a format. I don't know. Um, 
but I don't think it is. I think it's probably roto for sort of rotational something maybe. There we go. All right. That was the Saturday puzzle. Not my finest performance, I have to say. Um, but there we go. I, I think a perfectly fine, uh, you know, it was a perfectly good puzzle. I just, um, I struggled with it. But, you know, sometimes that happens on Saturdays. It's kind of the point of Saturday, I suppose. Uh, but there we have it. A tricky one for me anyway. But let me know how you fared with this, um, this sort of four quadrant grid. Um yeah, it was it was it was tricky. What did I find tricky? Let's see. Uh, certainly this area down here, because I just sort of sailed through it, assuming I didn't know things, and 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 obviously I didn't know this. Um, but in this case, I sort of created something I didn't know out of something that I should have known um, because of my general lack of certainty. Uh, and then, yeah, I don't know. It's just sort of, I guess these areas down here were just sprinkled with things that took me a while to put in and then things that took me ages, even though I should have gotten them immediately, like despises for can't stomach. But what can you do? That was the Saturday puzzle. This is just how it goes sometimes. So there we have it. Hope you enjoyed it. Do let me know how you found this one. I, I really am always curious to know. I tend to, I like to pop into the uh, uh, Discord and see, and then I always read all the comments, of course, as well. Uh, but there we have it, the Saturday crossword. Hope you enjoyed. Do join me for the Sunday crossword. Um, but until then, do take care.